Hey everyone, my name is Mike and I'm with Mantis Machinery Solutions and today we're going to be talking about how an encoder works. This is a small portion of our Fundamentals of CNC Machinery training class that lasts about a week and we go into a lot more detail and cover some of the other major components like CNC's and PLC's and motors and all that good stuff. So for now, let's just talk about how an encoder works. Okay, how does an encoder work? Well first let's talk about what an encoder is. An encoder is a device that provides position information for an axis. It's usually used with a motor, so a motor does the moving, and an encoder gives feedback of where the axis is located. An encoder can be broken down into two groups, absolute versus incremental. We're going to talk about the differences between those two. Okay, so an absolute encoder basically provides specific location information, so it knows exactly where it is at all times. On the other hand, an incremental encoder is really only measuring how far it's traveled and in which direction. So it needs a starting point before it will work. So if you have a machine that needs to be referenced or homed each time you turn it on in the morning, well then you probably have an incremental encoder. Some machines will use a combination of both. You might have an incremental encoder on the X and Y axis and a uh, absolute encoder on the z-axis, and that's okay, it just depends on how they decided to set up the machine. This is a picture of an encoder. There are two major components to an encoder. One of them is the read head, pictured here, and the other is the scale. And the idea is that the read head travels along with the axis, and the scale is stationary, probably bolted to the side of the machine or runs along a rail, but the read head is moving relative to the scale. This particular one happens to have a metal scale that is open. So this is an incremental encoder with a open metal scale. Uh, this one is another linear encoder, uh, happens to be closed. So we still have the read head that's moving and we have the closed scale. Okay, so I've drawn out the encoder here and I have my read head and I have my scale. First we're going to talk about how a metal encoder works and then we'll kind of extrapolate that to discuss the other types. So the idea is this scale has tick marks on them. These tick marks are made of something that's very reflective, often gold. The read head has the light source and it has a sensor. So light is traveling out of the read head, hitting the scale. In some cases we're over top of a tick mark that's reflective and the light travels back into the sensor. Think of the sensor like a solar cell. Whenever it gets light, it produces a voltage. So if I'm traveling with the read head back and forth on the scale, each time I'm over a tick mark, I'm going to produce a voltage. Well, the manufacturer knows how far apart those tick marks are. So let's say they're one millimeter apart. Well, then it's pretty easy to move my read head. Every time I get a voltage spike, I know that I traveled the distance of the tick mark, so one millimeter. So if I get five voltage spikes, well then I travel to five millimeters, right? A glass scale would work almost the same way, except the reed head kind of straddles the scale itself, and there's a light source on one side, a sensor on the other side. Remember what we talked about, if the light gets to the sensor, I produce a voltage. Portions of the glass scale are blacked out, so they prevent the light from hitting the sensor. So again, I can count how far, how many times uh, I don't have voltage or do whichever one I want to count, and determine how far I've traveled. Okay. I could also do this as a rotary encoder. This encoder could be bolted to the back of a motor, especially if you have a Fanuc or Siemens or Beckhoff. A lot of those guys use a rotary encoder mounted to them. Um, same thing. I have a light source and I have a sensor, and this here is like a pinwheel. We call it the the disc and it has portions of it that uh, are open and the light when it's traveling, if it goes through an open area, it's gonna hit the sensor, get a voltage. As it spins, right, I can very easily um, count how many voltage pulses I get. Okay, so we talked about these voltage pulses. It basically looks similar to this. This is a square wave. If I were to connect my oscilloscope up to the read head, this is probably what I would see. Um, Anytime I have a high voltage or have a voltage at all, well then I'm getting light to the sensor. When I'm not, I don't get voltage, right? I can count these peaks and determine how far I've gone. Well, another way of doing this is more with a sine wave as compared to a square wave. Us old school guys are probably more familiar with this style. 
if I'm directly on top of a tick mark, I'm producing a certain amount of voltage. As I get a little bit further away, well, a little bit less light is reaching the sensor, but it's still producing some voltage. And as I get further away or directly between two spikes, I produce the least amount of voltage. So overall, it looks more like a sine wave. Now, it doesn't matter as far as the control is concerned because we're really just counting the spikes. So as long as I'm above some threshold voltage, 0.8 or 1 or depending on the setup, um, I still know how many tick marks I passed, right? All right, now I know how far I've traveled, but I still don't know in which direction. So that's accomplished very simply. Basically, we add a second sensor, sometimes a second light source as well. So we have two bits of light, if you will, coming back into the read head. And depending on which one is in front of the other is going to determine which way we're traveling. In this case, let's call this signal one and this one signal two. If I'm traveling down, while well, signal one is going to be over top of a tick mark first, and its sine wave or square wave, its peak is going to be in front of signal two, right? In this particular case, signal one is in front of signal two, so signal one got there first. Uh, that means, according to the last picture, I was probably traveling in the downward direction. So far we know how far we've gone and in which direction, but we don't know the reference point yet. That is accomplished by a home switch. So along one end of the axis, the negative end, is going to be some sort of a sensor, whether it's a proximity sensor, a limit switch, or it's even built into the encoder. There's going to be something there that when the axes are turned on and referenced, they move in the specific direction. They're going to recognize that home switch and call that zero, zero point, okay? And then from there, they can easily uh, determine where everything is on the table, right? Okay, so this was just a nutshell, uh, but hopefully it makes a little bit more sense what's going on inside there. Some of the errors that you might get related to this are called a fatal following error, maybe a circos error, or some verbiage that, st that says, I'm not where I think I want to be. So it says the motor should be here, and the encoder is telling it I'm here, well, it's going to throw out an error. And maybe you look in your manual or you call tech support and they're going to tell you, well, clean your encoder. Does that make sense now? Because if the encoder's dirty, well, the light isn't going to reflect off the scale as well. It's, voltage isn't going to come out of the sensor, and I don't know where I am. Right? Same thing with the alignment. They might tell you to make sure that read head is parallel to the scale. Does that make sense? If I'm on one end of the table and I'm very close, and on the far end of the table, I'm very far, well, I can no longer get the same amount of light. Different voltages, if I'm below the threshold voltage, well, I've got a problem. Okay, so there's only a couple of major components. Of course, there's a lot of different things that can go wrong, but overall, this is a fairly simple device, and depending on the setup on your machine, they're all gonna function in the same way.